So, I'm a Deadeye. This is no longer a ranged attacker. So, what I have here is I have the Guardian Sanctuary of Thought, which makes it so I can run more auras, and so things cost less to use. I have the uh, Trickster's Opportunistic, which makes me do super damage to uniques. I have the Elementalist Heart of Destruction, which gives a bunch of extra elemental damage, which you can't see it here, but it's here. And I have uh, First to Strike, Last to Fall, which is right here, which is the Champion's Adrenaline Passive. Which I'm going to be, be... I have a way to trigger as well now. This right here is the community passive tree. It is a collection of what everyone else has figured out is where the passives are. So the community has put this together. This is the Deadeye currently. Uh, Void Beacon, which is a cultist. Opportunistic, which is Trickster. Mindless Aggression, which is Necromancer. Radiant Faith, which is Guardian. First to Strike, Last to Fall, which is Champion. Falco Storm's Embrace, which is Chieftains. Sanctuary of Thought, which is Hierophant. And Heart of Destruction, which is Elementalist. So there's not a single Ranger passive, uh, or single Ranger Ascendancy point in the uh, Deadeye Ascendancy at all right now. Which is awesome. Uh, this is just a clusterfuck of damage. It's really, really good. I love the option to test out weird shit. Uh, for anyone who does not have the passive tree and wants to see it, I will be linking it in the description of the video as well. So I want to go over this particular build here. This is my passive tree right now. I started over here. I have with some uh, just I'm not going to go over all the small stuff, but uh, just impale, elemental damage, endurance charge, lightning damage, weird selection. But I picked Arc Mines, which is elemental damage and lightning damage. Got a bunch of flash charges from Replenishing Remedies and some extra strength because I need it. Over here, I got a Mine Mastery for Mines Cannot Be Damaged, which is valuable. I also grabbed uh, little bits of life here and here, some Chaos Res, some more Chaos Res, some more uh, Intelligence because I need it, and Divine Judgment, which is like super elemental damage. Then I have Heart of the Warrior over here for extra health. I have In Inexonerable here, which is really good. 25% chance to gain Endurance Charge when you're hit. Uh, and I'll show you, I have more synergies for that in a second. Plus I have the Mana Mastery to give me more Mana Reservation. Which is good, and I'll show you more about that later too. So over here, Life, Mana, more, more Elemental Damage. I have even more Flask Charges. Then up here is when it starts to get a bit crazy. So I have Lightning Walker here for Lightning Damage. I have Crackling Speed here for Lightning Damage. I have Breath of Lightning here for Lightning Damage. I have Heart of Thunder here for Lightning Damage. <laughs> like all in this one little area here. And I have uh, Elemental Overload for Elemental Damage. All of it's not supposed to be together. Because that would be too overpowered. Which is why I'm using it. Also, we have a maximum endurance charge here, and a minimum endurance charge here, as well as damage scaling for endurance charges. So, I have three separate endurance charges passives, and with charged mines, I have power charge and frenzy charges. So, I have all three types of charges right now, four endurance charges, and four frenzy charges, and three power charges. Also... I've grabbed every bit of reservation efficiency I can get. So I have 8% here. I have 8% here. I have 8% here. And then I have a huge amount of reservation efficiency from Sanctuary of Thought. And all of those together are the reason why I am able to run Grace, Wrath, Summon Skitter bots with Unbound Ailments and Clarity all at once right now. So I've made like a super... A super lightning character, basically. Next, I'm going to show you the actual passives. So, here is the path of building right here. I have uh, two singularities as my weapons. They are for dealing uh, just general damage to hindered enemies, and I hinder things in multiple ways. My normal rares to give me some evasion and armor. I have Dodre's Tenure for spell damage. Two Valico's Sign for damage against shocked enemies and lightning damage. 
and a Voice of the Storm for more lightning damage. You can ignore all of this shit right here. This is just to simulate this damage right here. So this is just to like basically make the passives that exist on this tree be allocated in a way that otherwise can't be done with path of building. So what I have in the skill tree is just just the stuff I need to uh, simulate the skill tree that I have in, in the real game. I also have the passive skill tree prismatic gem that I have made. This is this allocates every notable that I have allocated on the tree in game as well as adds the basic stats that I have added from that tree in game as well. It's just a rough approximation of what the actual build will look like, but it general this will generally give you a concept of what it is. And then I will swap to the node pathing. So the node pathing tree here, this is where your nodes are supposed to go to run my arc miner. So Obviously, you don't have Entropy here, you don't have Blood Siphon here, you don't have Revenge of the Hunted here. Like, all of all of these, this tree that you're seeing here is wrong for Krangled. But this is where your points go. So this is just to show you the pathing. The, no the damage and numbers here are all completely wrong because of this. But I just wanted to show where to put your points in specific. The way that I have built this is I started here, going around for the... Um, for the strength here and for the uh uh blast charges here i went straight up here picked up the uh, int up here and the divine judgment here for elemental damage then i i walked over here and got the mind mastery and then i started walking up i grabbed this on the way immediately which gives the endurance charges and more elemental damage here pathed all the way up Grabbed lightning damage, endurance charge, endurance charge, lightning damage. Went over, grabbed more lightning damage, walked up, grabbed more lightning damage, and some more stats here. Got stats, and more mana reservation here. And this last point is... Last point is utmost strength, which gives it just a shit ton of strength, because attributes are really hard to get in this particular passive tree. But yeah, the, this is just to grab the life and the mana reservation, which is why I only have these two and not nothing else. Plus, it's, I don't need the trap mastery. Then I have path. I have a pathing over here, and that grabs the maximum frenzy charge here. Plus, I also path a little bit this way. After that, grab purity of flesh, grab the mana reservation, and then finally I start to path out over hereish. But I grab the chance to avoid ignite, 10% strength, then mana reservation efficiency, because that's really important. And then after that, we finally head down this way to grab the mana and life that are here. And to grab sovereignty, which gives more mana reservation efficiency, and trickery, which just gives flat damage, dex, and int. And that there is the entire build. Then I should actually show off the uh, ascendancy too. Back to the path of building here. Our order here for Ascendancy is you pick the Opportunistic first, which gives you extra damage against bosses, it just to help you level in the campaign. Sanctuary of Thought for having more mana reservation efficiency and such, so you can run a bunch of ores so that you'll be able to run Grace and Wrath and then eventually Skitter bots. Then first to strike, last to fall, which uh, to show you it on the tree, of this, the part that we care about is gain adrenaline for 20 seconds when you reach low life, recover 25% of your life when you gain adrenaline, and remove all ailments and burning when you gain adrenaline. I don't know why it specifies burning. Burning as an ailment. Maybe it's not. I don't know. That's. But uh, we have uh, Vol Righteous Fire, which is what will be used to activate this. So Vol Righteous Fire eats 60% of your health, bring us down to 40%. Then this instantly heals us for 25%, bring us up to 65, and gives us adrenaline. And adrenaline, if you look at the damage over here, let's swap adrenaline on, it gives us an extra 100,000 damage, which is really good. Then finally, 
We have the Heart of Destruction on the 4th Ascendancy, if you get this far, which adds Convergence. So you get AoE, generally, for whenever you're not dealing elemental damage to a unique mob. But otherwise, if you hit a unique mob, you temporarily get increased elemental damage, or more elemental damage, bringing up to 1.4 million. Now, if we activate other things... The right to Volridge's fire that I said we hit to get adrenaline, 1.7 million. And then what I also have is I added Vol Smite to the build because we actually have scepters, which means you can use Vol Smite. So if you do get enough Vol Souls, you can trigger Vol Smite, which gives you another 400,000 DPS from the aura that it creates. So all you have to do is hit something once, and then you have about 10 ish seconds of the vol aura to give you extra damage which brings you up to 2.1 million dps which is pretty fucking good for a build that is approximately 20c at most 10c maybe it's very very cheap it's meant to be as cheap as humanly possible for our gods we have solaris and rislatha Rislatha isn't required because we already have a stupid amount of, of flash charges coming in. Uh, Rislatha gives us three flash charges every three seconds if you haven't used a life flask recently. We also have three charges every three seconds from other sources too. So if you haven't used a life flask recently, you have six charges, or effectively you have two charges a second that you're gaining. Which is fucking amazing. And that is the majority of the build. Oh, I should also show off uh, how we're doing our skills. So we have a curse here. We have conductivity. I looked into doing marks because there's a lot of marks nearby on our passive tree. But it just, it's not worth it. They just don't do enough damage. So I picked conductivity up. Uh, I specifically picked a level 9 arcane surge. Which means that arcane surge will activate with every activation of, of conductivity to give us extra mana regeneration and extra cast speed. And then inspiration support, which will reduce the mana cost of this, because we don't actually have a huge amount of mana unreserved, so it's important to have that, and we don't really need the slot for anything else. Then we have our auras over here in our helmets. We have our wrath, our grace, and our skitter bots. You don't have to have the skitter bots active. You can just use wrath and grace to start with. These are the priorities then you can activate skitter bots when you have more mana reservation okay. uh the offhand currently has nothing in it just because i haven't had enough time to find something that actually would fit well with it uh then we have our main skill here so we have arc high impact mine to make arc into a mine minefield so you throw five mines at a time charged mines so that you gain frenzy charges and power charges from mines as well as gain mine throwing speed from your power frenzy charges then we have lightning penetration and controlled destruction for damage finally we have our buffs down here that i showed you earlier righteous fire with uh, increased duration and vol smite which increased duration and also faster attacks because you don't really have much attack speed being that you are not a melee character so it makes your vol smite go off faster and finally, we have our cast when stunned, which gives us a frost shield if we get stunned, as well as it can also summon a hydrosphere, which gives lightning exposure to things at, kind of at random, and also chills and shocks them. So it has a, an additional chance to uh, freeze the things around you, basically. It's just a little bit of extra drivability, a little bit of extra damage. And that is the build itself. So far, it has been a pretty damn strong build. I've been very, very happy with it. It's generally a pretty strong build.